Hey Game Makers, Nelderson here. Uh, today I wanted to get rolling on our dev series again. And want to dive into Socket.io and trying to make uh, global variables and global switches. So that way when you activate a switch, it activates that switch on everybody else's client that is connected at that given time. Uh, in order to do this, we need to kind of go over the basics of Socket.io. So for those of you who have never, ever, ever touched Socket.io, uh, I highly suggest looking up other YouTube tutorials on Socket.io. I mean, I'm going to briefly go over it. Um, and I am by no means the expert with Socket.io. Uh, but anything that I don't fill in or you don't understand, uh, I'm going to assume that you have a basic level of Socket.io. I mean, I'm going to go over basic stuff anyway. But just in case you haven't, definitely look up other YouTube videos. All right, with that said, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into Socket.io. So what exactly is Socket.io? Socket.io enables real-time bi-directional event-based communication. So what does that mean? It means that it passes data really quick and the long and short of it. Um, it uses WebSocket connection and actually backs up automatically to Ajax and uh, a couple other JSONP polling and a couple other things in the background. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I use Socket.io as opposed to just straight WebSockets. Um, if you want, the, the long and short of it is uh, when we start getting into rooms and namespaces, uh, the benefit that Socket.io gives with its adapter is just that much greater. And like I said, Socket.io is the website. I highly suggest coming here. They have all sorts of documents and blogs and uh, they have a Slack channel where you can talk about stuff. Uh, they also have something really good in the docs other than the, the API and stuff like that is this emit cheat sheet which I will be referring to actually a couple times later on. Uh, this is really nice when we start getting into uh, eventing and how we handle events and that sort of thing. Okay, this is a nice little resource. So Socket.io, good resource to have. All right, with that said, <clears throat> so how do I use Socket.io in my system? Uh, to understand how I use and why I use Socket.io and when to use Socket.io. So, so far we have done uh, an API with CloudSafe. So when we talked about why we chose API call for CloudSafe, uh, the reason was it was only really one call at a time, but I could also see where you might want to make like a website where you can access your sa save data or delete your save data or something along those lines. Connecting it to a socket IO server from another uh, endpoint it, while doable is just not practical in the, in the web development world. Um, it makes more sense to just make an exposed API and then you can call it from literally a button anywhere that anyone knows how to set up a post request. So the cloud save, it just made more sense doing it that way. Uh, the When you want to use Socket.io is definitely more for real-time stuff. So anything that requires real-time updating, Socket.io is going to be the best option. So, th so things that I use it for are the chat system, the uh, net network player, which is uh, pretty much essentially giving XY coordinates of where you are to everyone else at the same time. Uh, and I also use it for, what else do I use it for? Hold on. I also use it for, no, no, those are the only two things. So the, the next thing that we are going to make today, which we'll add to this list, is global variables and global switches. Now, what exactly do I mean by global variables and global switches? Uh, I'm going to explain this later on again, but really quick, it's you flip a switch, it flips the same switch on everybody else's machine that is connected. Um, really easy, really straightforward, and it shows the power of Socket.io all kind of encapsulated into one. Okay. With that said, let's start diving into a little bit of Socket.io and how it works with existing applications because, you know, I made this very modular and I made example sockets so that you could see how it works so that you can then develop your own socket modules on top of it. Okay, so first things first, let's 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 dive into, we've talked about what Socket.io is, it's a bi-directional communication. Okay, let's see how it works with my system. So this is my online core. Okay, and this is my server.js file right up here. Okay, and within this server.js file, um, we have our API routes here. You know, the require, you know, authentication versus non-authentication. And if you remember, we talked about the authentication um, 
uh, authenticate API where it actually takes your token. So the token you get when you log into the game, okay, and it kind of every single API call you call that is authentication required checks the token to see if it's valid. Uh, Socket.io does something a little bit different. So Socket.io, we still use this uh, JavaScript web token to authenticate, uh, but it's handled by an NPM uh, plugin called uh, Socket.io JWT. So Socket.io Java Web Script Token. Uh, and this, so you log in, the token is set, okay? And then it is passed off to every instance of IO right in here. So because of this, IO requires login. Uh, this was the simplest and quickest method to get it working. Uh, I am experimenting with uh, IO.use. Uh, with another set of authorization tactics for the Socket.io. Um, I'm working on that, but hopefully in the future we will be able to pick and choose which modules you want uh, authorized versus unauthorized access. Uh, right now, in order to use Socket modules, you have to use my login system and people have to be logged in before you can use Sockets. Let's talk about how do we configure Socket.io. So within here, you notice we just require the module and then down here we actually bind the socket module down here. Um, let's take a look at the example because we're going to start getting into something important here in a second. Uh, so socket module, let's go to example socket. Okay. We got our config, we got our log in here. This is where it gets interesting. So module exports just exports this entire function so that we can call it within here. So example socket IO, we can call that through the require. Uh, this right here is where it's gonna be important. So uh, set IO, it's actually namespace is the correct name for it. So this sets the IO namespace right here when we say the entire socket IO of example. Uh, this is going to be an important subject within Socket.io, the concept of namespaces. So one of the things that I that I wanted to accomplish with this system was making this modular so that everyone can use it. Um, one of the problems that I ran into was this, you see this IO connection and running different things within here? Uh, originally, I had it as one big file where when you connected, you would have to run all your logic that every single th um, every single other module, you would have to put in your own logic within this file and it would become cluttered and ridiculous within two seconds if we made more than, you know, two, two modules. Um, so one of the things that I found with Socket.io that has it built in is this concept of namespaces. So what namespaces does is it allows you to have multiple namespace, you can use the same names and use the same namespaces, but they are technically different sockets, almost. So, yeah, I actually have a good, uh, a good chart here. All right, so if we look at this chart here, all right, you got a client. Think of it as almost connecting to three separate sockets, but actually in actuality, it's not connecting to three separate sockets. Okay, we're all connecting to the same server. We're connecting to the same socket connection. It's just all being sectioned off into different namespaces. So like I would have a separate namespace for battle, a separate namespace for chat, and a separate namespace for players. And it's defined by right here. So SIO of example, SIO is the entire socket IO, and I'm instantiating a variable of IO to that whole socket IO of example in this in this scenario so if i come over to my other socket modules and i go to net player you can see that i kind of did the same thing here so this is just you know i am naming this net players this uh this namespace net players so i can have a connection event listener here and a connection event listener here and they are two different connection event listeners. So the reason why this is important, let's say I want to do a socket emit my ID. I can have an a socket emit my ID over here and I can also put it over here if I want. 
I can also put it over here if I want, and it's not going to interfere with uh, the namespace. So this can have a my ID, a socket event of my ID and a socket emit of my ID over here, and they will not uh, conflict with each other because they're on different namespaces. And we can easily section things off based off of our namespace. So, you know, this is great for us as developers because we can, all we have to do is create a different, unique um, namespace name, and we don't have to worry about our emits, our event listeners, our event emitters. We can just name everything however we want, and it won't interfere with anyone else's code. Okay, so that way it eventually, it essentially makes each socket module like its own island. Okay, so that way if you're making a socket module and you're using this method, you'll never interfere with my code. I'll never interfere with your code. So that's why I highly suggest doing it this way. Uh, the, the, this was not originally here when I made my overview. So this is very important that I go over this now because I did kind of go over rooms, but I did not go over namespaces. Namespaces is a huge advantage of using socket IO as opposed to just pure web sockets, which do not have namespaces by, by default. Okay. So namespaces are extremely important to my system. Okay. Pretty much, like I said, th this is the easiest way to explain it. It's almost like connecting to three separate sockets and actually the client is what actually connects to these different uh, sock. It, it's technically the same socket, but it they connect to the namespaces. So the client connects to the namespaces. And then the second half of this is rooms. So rooms are a further divider of data. So for instance, you know, if I was having a chat and let's say I had, you know, my room one was, um, let's say map one and then map two and then map three, you know, I can have the chat only work with room one, which is only map one. You know, everyone who's on map one is on this room one here. And then everyone who's on map two is in this room two here. And everyone who's on map three is on this map three here. And they can't talk to each other because they're all in their separate rooms. Okay. But I could also have a room one, a room map two and a room map three over with players. And these can't talk to each other because of the namespacing um, restrictions. So it, it's a very important distinction, uh, but this is this is a good way to section things off and like I said, keep our code clean in between um, different developers making different socket modules, okay? I know this might be a little confusing, that's okay. There's a lot better tutorials out there. I'll try to link them in the description. Uh, and I would highly suggest looking into more about rooms and namespaces.